you guys remember how what you thought the first thing that would happen is that you thought that this would act like a base and deprotonate here. And that is frustrating because we know that things can oftentimes act as either nucleophiles or bases. Suppose that what you wanted was that you did want to deprotonate here. Suppose that you did want to deprotonate this. What should we add so that we don't need to worry about the nucleophilic attack? Uh, protecting the protecting with or Simpler than that. We should use, remember we've talked about this, we should use a base that's the same as the L group so that even if there is a nucleophilic attack, it won't matter. So yeah, we talked about this briefly before. This is a difficulty because bases can also be nucleophiles. Well, in this case, we focused on how this was a nucleophile and did the hydrolysis. But what if we wanted it to act like a base? Well, then we should use a base that matches our L group. So even though it probably will do some nucleophilic attacks, that won't change, that won't give us any interesting products, and we can focus on and we can focus on how it can act like a base and deprotonate. We talked about that earlier today as well. Do we assume one equivalent of the BR or two? I don't think it matters. We'll, we'll see as we go along. Right. Uh, okay. All right, looks like you guys are already uh, well on your way. All right, now, it would take forever if we drew the mechanism here. Okay, yeah, that sounds like a good analysis. All right, well, for a huge problem like this, we can't do the whole mechanism because it'll take forever. So let's just draw the product from each step. So I'm going to, let's first draw the product. Uh, well, we can start by drawing the product maybe from the first two steps together if you want, whatever you like.
That's it. That's it. Give much trouble then. You want to make very be very careful to make sure you haven't added or dropped any carbons uh, incorrectly, but you got that right. Okay. Well, you can see that we can easily start putting a whole bunch of steps together here, but you guys are still uh, not getting confused by that, so uh, that's good. Uh, let's see, we started by using a base. Notice that we used a base that was similar to the L group, so we didn't need to worry about nucleophilic competition. That made the enolate on this alpha carbon, not this alpha carbon, because this is more stabilized by resonance. What type of reaction happened in step two? SN2. Yeah, I didn't show the mechanism, but we know that this enolate can attack this in an SN2. Uh, that puts this over here. Again, I think it's helpful to keep labeling our alpha carbon. Uh, then we did it all over again. Now, uh, here we use, the book used this base. Why would they use this base? Um, notice this is a very bulky base. And I think they're using a very bulky base here to make sure, again, it won't act like a nucleophile. We know that very bulky bases are not good nucleophiles. So this is another good way to make sure that you won't get a nucleophilic competition. Instead of using something that matches the L group, you can use something that's so bulky that it's only going to act like a base and not like a nucleophile. At that step number three, they could have used NaOBT again, right? It seems, that seems right to me. Yeah, I don't, see any, I don't see any reason why they couldn't do that. Yeah, I think they're just showing off the different things they can do here. Yeah. Uh, oh, to go back to your question earlier, you were asking how many equivalents of this we needed. And you were probably asking because you wanted to know whether this would attack once or twice. Right. Um, but I think you gave the right answer to that. Um, after the first attack, this isn't an enolate anymore. And it's not going to turn in an enolate until step three, when we add more base. So um, presumably, you would only add one equivalent. But even if you added excess alkyl bromide, I think you would still only get one attack here. Because um, after the enolate attacks in one SN2, there's nothing left to turn into a base. Uh, and once we go on to step three, we should imagine that all this is gone. Although actually, to tell the truth, yeah, it would be best to, to use only one equivalent. That way, none of this is going to be left over for the succeeding reactions to compete. So you really should just use only one equivalent. So that was a good question. It's best to just use one equivalent here. All right, and then we did, um, what type of reaction happened in step four? SN2. Another SN2. By the way, again, notice some tricks you can use to save space um, using these abbreviations. Ethyl, butyl, propyl. Also, that makes you less likely to add or drop carbons. So this is a good notational trick that you can use. Uh, at the very end, I stopped doing that. But in the middle of the reaction, it saved time to actually use those abbreviations. Uh, and then what happened here in step five? Well, first, hydrolysis. And then, once we got the carboxylic acid, and this is what, again, a lot of people would forget. A lot of people, again, are so happy that they got this that they forget that under hot conditions, this can still decarboxylate. Because they can't think that more than one thing can happen in one numbered step. Even though this is only one numbered step, two big things happen, both the hydrolysis and the decarboxylation. So when you're taking the test, you have to make sure that you don't stop too soon. That's why I said this is step five continued. There's more stuff that can do here with the decarboxylation because this is a beta carbonyl carboxylic acid. Um, if you wanted to, you could have split this up into two steps. You could have done first a, a base catalyzed hydrolysis and then done the acid and heat. But we talked about how it seems much simpler just to do the acid catalyzed hydrolysis. Okay, again, you have to be very careful not to add or drop carbons. It, it might have been useful to put in some numbers, uh, but for me, I'm able to get it right if I just play, keep labeling the alpha carbon here. I didn't bother asterisking the carbonyls because they're not acting like electrophiles. Now there's a name for this. This is the acetoacetic ester synthesis. Oh, that's the 